So you're going to be moving to Cincinnati, Ohio soon, or maybe you're thinking about it. Well, you better think twice. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's a lot of things about Cincinnati you need to think about before making this move. Although Cincinnati is one of the most popular relocation towns in recent years, there's some stuff that may give you a change of heart once you find out. I'm going to give you six things you should know before moving to Cincinnati, Ohio. We're getting into it right now. What's up, it's Victor Fam, your Cincinnati Realtor, back again talking about all things Cincinnati, talking about all things related to real estate in Cincinnati. So if that sounds interesting to you and you have not subscribed to the channel yet, be sure to do so so I can keep you up to date on all the latest videos about Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm helping people relocate to and buy real estate here in Cincinnati all the time. So if that's gonna be you soon, feel free to reach out to me. I'm sure I can help you too. And remember, when it comes to houses in Cincinnati, you can always call Vic. All right, the number one thing you need to know about Cincinnati before you make the move is the weather. This is a four season region, so we get all four seasons, summer, spring, winter, and fall. We get really crappy winters and we get really nasty summers. But most notably, the winter is probably the worst. Not necessarily for the snow, as a lot of you may presume to be the truth, but more so for just some periods with really low temperatures and your occasional ice storms, which can be very irritating, especially for commuting. Oh, I almost just kicked that rock. I'm not gonna We really don't get as much snow as the more northern Ohio areas like Cleveland or Toledo may get. We get significantly less than them at only about 23 inches of snow per year, close to 45 inches if you're talking about rain. We actually get more rain in Cincinnati during the winter time than we do snow. And really the last several years, it's been feeling like less than that if you're talking about snow. I can only recall one heavy snowstorm per year, sometimes two in a really bad year, but usually it's just once a year you'll get a heavy snow. The thing about Cincinnati is that the weather changes so often that if you do get a snowstorm, it usually does not stick for very long. You might get a few inches of snow with really low temperatures, and then a day or two later, the temperatures get really mild into the 40s, and all the snow melts, and it's just a big wet mess. So snow is probably not the biggest worry when it comes to winter, but more so the ice that you can get and those occasional low temperatures that can occur. When that rain starts to mix with really low temperatures, sometimes zero or even below, it can cause a lot of freezing issues, travel issues, makes it just really nasty, difficult to navigate and uncomfortable. Outside of that, winter is pretty mild. Right now, as I'm making this video, it's like 37, close to 40 degrees, and we're in the dead of winter, almost February. A lot of the winter is honestly not as cold as you might think. Biggest things to worry about, like I said, in the winter is that ice and a little bit of unpredictability, which is a common place in Cincinnati. The weather can be very unpredictable. So if you're used to really nice, stable weather, like being in California or Florida or somewhere near the beach all year long, Cincinnati might be a big adjustment for you. Nasty winters, hot summers with a lot of humidity, rain all year long, basically half of the year you'll get rain. And if you're used to a dry heat in the summer, you're usually not gonna get that here. Cincinnati gets very, very humid, very sticky in the summertime. So that can be uncomfortable if you're not used to humidity. Keep that in mind. Another thing which is related to weather that I should mention are allergies. Now, if you deal with seasonal allergies or if you live somewhere where there's not a lot of grass and tree pollens, then you need to think about whether or not you'll be able to adapt to those kind of things. Every season change has its irritants that will affect people with allergies. In the spring, you've got tree pollen. In the summer, it's grass pollen. And in the fall, I think it's weed pollens. So for me, I've always had bad allergies. I guess I've grown to adapt to them being here so long. So it's not really something I think about. But if that is something that you don't deal with a lot or you've never experienced, you might want to consider that. Maybe come visit Cincinnati in the spring right at a high allergy season and see if that's something you can adapt to. But on a good note, according to the study by the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America, Cincinnati isn't even ranked in the top 50 cities for worst allergies. It's actually ranked at around 56. So there's some ugliness to Cincinnati weather, but there's also some beauty. 
If you have a tough time adapting to frequent weather changes, Cincinnati might be a very big challenge for you. Number two thing you need to know about Cincinnati. It is a very hilly city. It's a very hilly region. If you're coming from somewhere like Chicago or New York where the terrain is much more flat, then you're probably gonna be in for some big surprises. Cincinnati basically sits in a valley, so you're gonna have a lot of steep hills, a lot of turns, a lot of dips, a lot of twists. Some of these hills and valleys, you'll feel like you're on a roller coaster or something. Good example of that is Mount Adams, which is at one of the highest elevation points in Cincinnati with some beautiful views of the entire city up there. I think just about every street in Mount Adams is on a hill. So this is common, be ready to adjust to that. But for a lot of people, it's not a really hard thing to get adapted to. The biggest concern I get from a lot of buyers about the hills is that there is a potential for water intrusion into the homes. So if you have very steep hills that are sloped towards your foundation, it does create the need for a lot of preventative maintenance to reduce the chances of water intrusion into your lower floors. That is a challenge in Cincinnati that you may face. So if you're from somewhere that is very flat with no hills, that may be a factor for you. Or maybe it sounds exciting to you. Maybe you want some hills in your life. You might need some hills in your life. Number three thing is traffic. I'll keep it real with you guys. People in Cincinnati, they can't drive. There are some irritating drivers in Cincinnati. You really gotta pay attention not only to what you're doing, but to what other people are doing. In addition to that, our expressways are small. We don't have as many lanes as the bigger cities. I remember when I first went to Atlanta a long time ago and they had six and seven lane expressways. It was terrifying to me. Never saw anything like it. But in Cincinnati, you're getting three lane expressways most of the time, four in some areas. So be prepared for some congestion, especially if you're commuting anywhere near the bridges, I-74, I-75, getting closer to Kentucky. That's something you will have to deal with as a driver. Also be prepared for long construction projects. There's been a ton of construction done to 74 and 75 that has greatly helped the flow of traffic over the last decade, but there are still some spots that are under construction and will probably be under construction <laughs> for a long time. So be prepared to be a good navigator because there are some obstacles here in Cincinnati. Number four is limited public transportation. Cincinnati is not a very big city, so we don't have really sophisticated underground subway systems like you'll get in New York or rail cars and trains that you might see in Atlanta or Chicago. So for people who don't drive, that really sucks. There's a lot of commuting that is done in and around the city and also back and forth between Kentucky, which borders Cincinnati. I would love to see something like this come about where there's a train or a rail system that goes through the whole Cincinnati metro area. I know it's been proposed before, but never done. But honestly, I don't know how big the demand would be for that kind of thing with Cincinnati being such a small city, but that is a factor if you don't drive. Your best bet is going to be the metro bus line for cheap public transit. The metro bus line runs through all of the city and into some of the suburban areas as well. It's a very established bus line and probably the most common public mode used by people here in Cincinnati. Outside of that, you're talking about Uber or Lyft, which can be really expensive if you're using it on a regular basis. Number five thing you should know about Cincinnati is that we are a slow paced city. Now, I don't know what slow is to you, but compared to New York, Atlanta, Chicago, Los Angeles, Phoenix, you know, all these huge cities, Cincinnati moves at a lot slower pace than those. Now, this is feedback that I get from a lot of clients and people who are coming from out of town from bigger cities. They tell me once they get here that it's a little more laid back than the big areas. If you are a fast life type of person, maybe that might be a hard adjustment for you. If you need a break from big fast paced cities, then maybe that's a huge bonus for you. Number six thing you need to know about Cincinnati is that there are a lot of sports fanatics. It's a big sports town in a small area. If you live near or have reasons to be near the major sports stadiums during certain sports seasons, you will have to deal with the occasional traffic that comes with it and probably your occasional drunken sports fanatic. We have it all in Cincinnati, football, baseball, soccer, hockey. We got the college sports teams. They're a big deal as well. So if you hate sports, 
put that on your list so you know to avoid the sports areas. If you love sports, then hey, you might be in for a treat. And the number seven thing you need to know about Cincinnati is that we have weird food traditions. Now, every culture has its own food thing, right? Their own little food stable that the natives all eat. But well, the food staple in Cincinnati is chili spaghetti. Yes, for like 100 years now, Cincinnatians have been taking spaghetti noodles, putting chili on top of them, and then putting like two pounds of cheese on top of that. And they call it a three-way. Yes, this is the reality in Cincinnati. My wife calls it a poor man's meal. I mean, this is something that I have grown up on as a child. I don't really get into it anymore because as I've gotten older, I've changed my diet. And honestly, this is probably irrelevant to most of you. That's why I have it at the bottom of this list. I mean, you can live in Cincinnati and not eat the native foods. I mean, you can eat whatever you want. There's a thousand food options in Cincinnati if you don't want to get down with the three ways. But I hope this video gives you some awareness about what it's actually like living in Cincinnati, Ohio. If you're going to be moving to Cincinnati or any of the Cincinnati suburbs soon and you need help, in the buying process, feel free to reach out to me. I would love to have a chat with you. If you want to watch some more cool videos on what it's like living in Cincinnati, Ohio, check out this playlist right here. I'll see you next time. And remember, when it comes to houses in Cincinnati, you can always call Vic.